Chapter 2, Second Step Now you know how important this test is. My mother began in the car. Stephanie Malcolm was a beautiful but tired-looking woman with short blonde hair that had somehow still not gone gray yet, despite being a widow and having to deal with my condition. Yes, Mom, I replied. She was stressed, but that was okay. I just had to deal with it until I aced my tests. It's actually three tests that they moved to one day for me. To accommodate you, she said, sounding tense. One final time. <sighs> she will not get to me today, I said firmly in my mind. Today is going to be a good day. I know, Mom, I said, trying to grin. I get that it's a big deal, seriously. This is my last chance to keep my scholarship, to keep the future I've worked so hard We've for. We've worked for? She corrected firmly. You haven't been alone in this. Your sister and I have been right here with you. We've both sacrificed to help you make your dreams come true. I turned to look at her. Where the hell did that come from? I know, Mother, I said, trying to keep the frustration out of my voice. I'm grateful for the both of you. Thank you, really. I love you guys. She was still looking forward, her hands on the steering wheel of the car. I just want to make sure you're taking this seriously. Why the he- I caught myself from swearing. For better or for worse, I've stuck to a lot of the habits Dad ingrained in me. Even after his suicide and finding out about his double life, I still couldn't bring myself to disappoint him by swearing at my mother like most of my 18-year-old classmates did. Mom, I tried again. Why wouldn't I be taking this seriously? This is my life. You know what I'm worried about. She replied tensely. No, I honestly don't. I wanted to shout, but shouting would hurt my head and I didn't want to turn this into a fight. Today is going to be a good day. I reminded myself. Is this about the game? I finally asked. The game that you let me play because the doctors told us that it would help me improve my condition? The one that I used to focus better, remember more? Work on my coordination? The one I was playing this morning to help me get ready for the tests? Mom looked uncomfortable. I had to remind myself that she was as worried about today as I was trying not to be. I'm just concerned about you, she finally said. I just want to make sure you're not using this game to cope instead of using it to help you. The way you're still using wine to cope with Dad's suicide? I didn't ask. I'd had way too much practice fighting with Mom these days. These years, actually. I knew what would happen if I said certain things to her right now, just like how I knew I'd react to her saying certain things to me. Then that would ruin my good mood, my morning, and possibly my tests and scholarship. Today is going to be a good day, I told myself once more, even if I have to work to keep it that way. Well, Mom, I really don't know how to answer that, I finally said, and she stiffened. Being too serious and too calm reminded her of Dad. A lot of things I did reminded her of Dad, and thanks to what he did, that was a bad thing now. But I couldn't help it, because being calm seemed like the right idea right now. Look, if it helps you understand, I continued, I tried to play in a way that would help me today. The Aussies helped me pick a spot in the game that would simulate a lot of what I normally feel when my body starts freaking out, like where it was hard to concentrate, move and remember things. That's happened to me every time I've tested so far, so I wanted to practice against that condition. That's why I got up so early to play, and why I've been playing after studying every day this month. Okay. Mother answered, still focusing on driving me to school. She was obviously still worried and probably still tense over me sounding like Dad. But she was trying to get past this too, and I had to give her some slack or we'd fight again. So? She finally continued. How did it go? She was trying to show interest. That was a good sign. 
The Aussies and I fought a dragon that screamed in our ears and made the ground shake under us. I was able to figure out how to counter the effect, and we killed it on our first try. Really? She asked, eyes widening and brightening up a little. That's, uh, uh, good, right? I smiled. I knew it. Today is going to be a good day. Yeah, it's great, actually. World first kill. That means no one else has been able to do so on any of the game's servers. Not even the best raiding guilds in any country. Gaming news groups and the game's company itself like to sponsor interviews for players who pull off victories like this. I was uh, going to tell you after the test, but I checked my email on the way out, and I've already gotten an interview request. Sometimes there are even small rewards, cash or other prizes to really spice up interest in the content. It's too early to tell if I've gotten that, though. Really? She said, actually sounding impressed, in spite of the fact that she hated games and hated anything else that reminded her of Dad. That sounds incredible, honey. I didn't like it when she called me honey, but I overlooked it because it had been a while since Mom sounded this impressed with me. Since I logged off early, I continued, really wanting to milk this approval for all it was worth. I tried going over all the study questions you and I have been reviewing together this month. I was able to remember the answers to 50 math, 50 science, and 50 English. That's the total number of my practice questions, right? Mom nodded. Good. I've also been able to walk down all the halls in the house without stumbling. My head feels better than it's felt in months, maybe even years. Mom was smiling now, too. Another rare victory, all in one day. I was determined to make them count. We finally pulled up to the school. I looked at all the other students walking outside, then began to gather my things and open the door. Wesley, honey. Mom said as I put my hand on the door. Uh-oh. My full first name usually meant trouble. But I still chose to hear her out. Yeah, Mom? Can you please do me a favor? I knew that look. She looked tense as if she was preparing for another fight. That was a bad sign. What do you want, Mom? I asked carefully, not leaving the car yet. Even though I knew staying to hear her out would be a bad idea. I want you to wear the helmet today. I needed to rethink that swearing stance with her. Because, well, shit. I don't think that's a good idea, Mom. Because it really, really wasn't. Honey, if you fall and hurt your head, today of all days, it could undo all your hard work. I sighed. That's why it's a bad idea, Mother. We've talked about this. My classmates were, objectively, assholes. Well, okay, not all of them, but there was enough jocks who still hated me from my old football days and who also decided that I was different enough on top of that to be a target. Wearing the leather helmet around my head on top of carrying the cane I walked around with would bring every asshole's hit or push this guy impulse straight to the front of their little brains. The problem was, despite the frequency of these events, no one had ever believed me. The jerks had always testified together at school, and for some reason the supervisors believed that I fell every single time on my own. For the past two years! My mother had begun to believe me, but she still didn't believe that the helmet made things worse. Wes, sweetheart, please. Do this for me, Mom asked. She always talked like that when she needed me to do something and she didn't want to have to fight about it. I sighed and reached for the helmet, knowing she'd check to make sure I wore it today. Call me a mama's boy, but having a fight with my mother right before I got to school, just when we had managed to get along the whole morning, would have ruined my mood even more than wearing the helmet would have. Shouldering my pack, I placed the helmet on my head and fastened the straps with my free hand. And just because today was going to be a good day, I smiled. There you go, Mom. I am now theoretically safer and empirically more dorky. Satisfied?
She gave me a sad smile, the kind she does when I remind her of Dad. And then she remembers he's dead and that she misses him, even though he lied to us all. I appreciate it, Wes. She said. And I'm already proud of you, no matter how today turns out. That might have just made it worth it, I thought as I got out of the car. A faint dizzy spell followed, but I walked right through it, cane held but not needed for an entire three steps. Several idiots shouted and jeered at me, but I ignored them. Today was totally going to be a good day.